Well, welcome back. <clears throat> this is the second lesson in the series. What we're going to uh, learn how to do today is to add a new project and to enter all of the relevant information uh, regarding the insured or, uh, or your client. And <clears throat> this session will take a few minutes, so just follow along with me. And uh, if you have a dual screen monitor where you can uh, actually uh, operate and watch at the same time and follow along that would be great so we went over all of our defaults earlier uh, went over all of these different tabs and what they mean and how to navigate what I'm going to show you now is how to simply add a new project so I'm going to go up here right here in the projects uh, recent projects area we can add a new project here I'm going to give it a name and I'm just going to call this one uh, American Adjuster Academy AAA Exactimate 28 Sample 1. You can call it anything you want. If you want to put your name in there, that's fine. So once you do that, go ahead and go over here and just click Add New Project. There's a drop down arrow right here. Make sure that you're on Estimate. And then go over here to this one and make sure that you're on carrier. If you're an insurance adjuster, it's going to be on carrier. If you're a general contractor, roofing contractor, it's going to be on contractor. So make sure that you have that set. And just come back and hit add new project. I left clicked on that. You're going to see a screen that pops up. <clears throat> and this is basically your insured or your client info. So I'm just going to type my name in here. There's multiple different drop-down boxes that you can use. Uh, what you really want to do on here is you want to make sure that the, uh, the address that you're using is the address of the, uh, of the loss or, or where the damage is. I want to type in my address. Again, there's a drop down box for the states. Go down and find what state you're in. Type in your zip code, whatever it may be, country, phone number if it's relevant. I always try to put a phone number in there. Email, if you need to put an email in, go ahead and do that. Your date of loss, that's going to be the date that the uh, actual damage happened to the house you can put a date in there whatever it is the date received is the date that you got the claim that you received the claim from the company date inspected just exactly what it says it's the date that you looked at the the, uh, the loss location the date that you entered is today and the date contacted would be the day that you contacted the insured or your client your claim rep information <clears throat> Probably all of yours uh, would be blank at this time. So what you would need to do is click on this little drop down arrow right here. And you can go to add. And you can enter that information here for your name. So your name might be John Doe. If you want to put your address in there, that's fine. Your phone number, your adjuster number, your adjuster FCN, that's your flood control number. I would assume that uh, most of your new adjusters and you probably haven't taken the NFIP course yet to get your flood number. If you have and you're working flood, that's a requirement. You've got to have your flood number in there. You can put what company you work for, your position, any notes. And if you have an exact net address, uh, put it in here. Okay. When you get that filled out, just click OK. Mine's already entered in here, so I'm not going to uh, modify that. <clears throat> if you have a mortgage on the policy, if the insurer has a mortgage, uh, this is where you're going to enter that. We want to be sure that our mortgage companies are correct, uh, so we know how to pay and who to pay. 
And that's really all that there is to this page. We'll go back up here to our coverage loss tab. All of this info is going to be, and the previous info would be generated off of a loss notice, which you're going to be supplied by your insurance carrier uh, or your independent adjusting firm, whoever you're working for. The claim number, that would be on the loss notice. I'll just make a number up here. Policy number, again, I'll just make another number up here. The type of loss, there's a drop down. Typically, uh, everything that you're going to be working is already preloaded for you. Cat code, a lot of storms uh, assign a cat code to it. A lot of companies assign a cat code, so that would go there. Your policy dates would go here, which is relevant to the claim. Uh, we need to verify that for coverage uh, uh, for coverage parameters. Your form numbers, um, you need to know what kind of policy you're working with. You can go in here, you can always add different forms if, if there's not one on here that's preloaded for your specific company. The adjuster file number, uh, usually that's the same number for uh, any claims that, that we work with our company as a claim number. The type of policy, the deductible, that would be provided to you on your uh, loss notice or your declarations pages. And then down here is where your coverage limits go. And <clears throat> this is all uh, able to be modified and moved around if you don't have the right coverage on here, the right, uh, uh, the right structure or multiple structures. You can go down here and add coverages for that. So you would type in your policy limits here, whatever they might be for that particular uh, dwelling. I'm going to go back up here and add a deductible. Policy limits, these tabs across the top. It's telling you whether to apply uh, that to the replacement cost, or you can hit the drop down, actual cash value, or both. Insured to value, if there's coinsurance involved with it, that's where your uh, percentage amounts would go there. If you set a reserve on it, you could set it here. Okay, moving on. The parameters. <coughs> This is where we set up our uh, parameters for our particular claims. Again, our price list, we would set them up here. Uh, we could go down and, and hit our smart list and pick up more. Uh, we need to, would have to go back to the original portion of it to download a price list. Uh, if we didn't already have one in here, we'd need to tell it what tax jurisdiction we were in. We're applying it to material only. I'll click on that. Uh, typically, we're going to apply it to material only. Uh, a lot of times we apply tax to contents. Very rarely do we apply tax to uh, labor. Structural only. Uh, typically that will be the only one that you deal with. These line items here. Uh, the sales tax is one that we typically use to modify. Uh, it depends on whether Really what's relevant down here is, is your tax type, whether you're applying O&P on tax, tax on O&P, or neither. And most of the time, we don't apply tax to O&P. This gives you depreciation options, depreciate the material, depreciate non-material, uh, whether you're going to depreciate the removal, which is basically labor, uh, overhead and profit, and sales tax. Again, you've got more parameters here in regards to depreciation, whether it's recoverable, how you're depreciating. If you need to add overhead and profit, this is where you would add those percentages. Your report text down here. This is what's printed on the header, uh, opening statement, and closing statements of your actual estimate. And it will have a logo or a header for your particular insurance company. And we'll just switch right now to American Adjuster Academy. We can look at that. It's showing our address. 
gives you a, if you want to put a logo in there, you can do that. The last recap. This is only going to be relevant after you start getting your estimate line items put in place and then report management. This is where you can go and look at your different reports uh, regarding the claim. Uh, there's areas in here for you to put a narrative that might be uh, relevant to the particular claim. So we've gone over basically how to set up a claim. If you'll work on that and go through it, that's how you get your insured info or your client info into the claim. And that's where we need to start so we can move on and uh, start completing our claim. You guys have a good day, and I appreciate the patronage. Thank you.